Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of the Three Man Weave, live here at the beautiful Radisson Hotel. Room number we will uh, not let you know, but uh, here we are. <laughs> yeah, I just got back from availability from this afternoon um, for IU and Virginia Commonwealth. Um, it's been a wild day here in college basketball, but you could definitely tell that these two teams are pretty focused on tomorrow. Uh, VCU. Shaka Smart, he was all talking about his havoc and this defense of 40 minutes of pressure, something that IU is definitely not used to, that they haven't seen at all this year. Connor, talk a little bit about Shaka and kind of, you know, where all that started and how that press kind of evolved, even though VCU has pressed, you know, for about the last five or six years, but it's definitely evolved under Shaka. Yeah, this is a, a philosophy that, you know, has, Shaka has really taken by storm, taken college basketball by storm in these past couple seasons with their run to the Final Four last year as an 11 seed, and they really surprised teams with the way that they pressure the ball. Last season, you know, they, looked, they had a, many more offensive playmakers, you know, but they were still number four in the country in steals. This year, they're number one in the country in steals. They allow something like 58 points a game. They're just The defensive numbers jump off the charts with this team, and what they really do is, you know, they kept emphasizing that is they really just get teams out of their offensive game plan. Even if you know teams are able to break their press, they're still not doing what they're used to doing. And it gets teams out of their flow. It gets guys out of their usual positions. and They're not running the half-court sets that they want to. And they really dictate the tempo that they want to you know, employ on these teams. And you know, uh, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty much been their recipe for taking down some of these head honchos. And it's what worked for them uh, just last night against Wichita State. So it's going to present IU with a lot of challenges. And it's going to be something that you know, IU really hasn't seen before. Bradford Bird just came to the press conference a little late today, but he made it clear that the only similarity between this team and last year's team is just the name on the jersey. Yeah. He said it's two totally different teams. I think they bring back only like 39% of their production from last year. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how IU handles that. Avi, you and I were in there for the IU press conference. Um, Tom Green, I think the players too, made it a big deal about how it's going to be up to all five guys on the floor to handle the pressure, not just Jordan Holes. Christian Watford mentioned VCU's length is similar to Kentucky. I don't know if, if that's a stretch uh, that a little bit, but I think they, they they definitely are long, and I'm sure on the press it makes things a little bit longer. So I think that's a big key for IU is, yes, a lot of it is on Jordan Holes tomorrow, but they really need everybody handling the ball. Yeah, I mean, uh, Crean, I, I think it was Crean, like explicitly said everybody's a ball handler. It, it's it's like you said, it's not just we're, we're just, you know, having the guards go through drills uh, in this off day. It's that everybody needs to be prepared that when you're in a situation where if you get double teamed, if you get a guy, you know, pressing you in the full court, that you, you know where you are and you know what situation you want to be in and you don't want to uh, kind of get in a spot where VC wants to force you into that pocket, force you into those right, corners. That was a big emphasis. Yeah. Right, and really kind of just take you, like Connor was saying, take you out of your game. Um, it's going to be really interesting. It really is. You know, it, it, VCU plays a style, again, echoing what Connor said, that IU has never seen before. It's going to really um, be intriguing to see how they handle that because I think IU can do it. I mean, this isn't a team that likes to slow it down and get into the half court. And because of that, I think that they're not going to be as bad off, um, you know, in this hurry up, in this in this sense where, you know, they have to kind of run the floor. But at the same time, something that's key is kind of going to be the mental game. It's going to be, can they keep their composure? You know, can they real step back and realize that, you know, they don't need to rush shots and kind of get into a flow that VCU wants to get into? VCU players mentioned that part of the part of the press isn't necessarily to create turnovers, which they do a great job of, but it's also to speed the other team up. Yeah. And like Avi said, that's kind of what IU likes, though. They like to play at a fast pace. Um, so we'll be interested to see what happens in the half court because I think that's where this game is going to be won. Yes, you know I think you know, IU's going to have to handle the pressure, but how well they execute in the in the half court is going to be huge because VCU prides himself on defense. Like Connor mentioned, they don't have the firepower back on offense that they did last year where they made the run through the tournament, set an NCAA record for most threes made in a tournament. And people f f forget, they, they started off the run in a playing game last year and then made their whole run through the, through the tournament. So I think this year they definitely pride themselves on defense. And, guys, let's get back to kind of about Jordan Holes. How crucial is it going to be, guys? Yes, Tom Green said it's a five-person you know job in, in breaking that press. But Victor Aldipo, Remy Abel, two guys that we've seen – and Victor's sense struggle at times handling the ball, and as Remy's sense, we don't really know, you know, how well he can handle it. How crucial are those two tomorrow? Because you know those are going to be the main ball handlers on on the press along with Jordan Holes. Yeah, I really think this is this could be 
Remy Abel's most important game. He kind of downplayed the impact of of his role in this game and being able to to break through the VCU press and control the IU offense. But really, his role is is going to going to be magnified tomorrow because that's a lot for even the most experienced of teams and experienced of ball handlers to be able to handle. That's why VCU is has surprised so many teams that have been able to take talents of elite teams in the past couple seasons. So for a true freshman to come into this situation and have to kind of navigate through that press, it's going to be really difficult. We saw even, you know, when you when you throw something different at Jordan Hulls, Jordan Hulls doesn't even always respond well. I, I go back to the Northwestern game where he really didn't know what he was doing in that 1-3-1. And the road forced game a lot of Iowa. Passes. Yeah, road game against Iowa where their, their length and their pressure really gave him a lot of problems. So, you know, you look at Jordan Hulls and you think, well, he's a good passer and he can shoot the three ball, so you would think that going against any sort of zone, he'd be in good shape. But really, we haven't really seen that decision making. It just kind of, it, it's it's just a lot different than what he's used to. And it'll be interesting to see the way that he responds because I think when it comes down to it, Jordan Holes is the most important player on the floor tomorrow, and whether or not he is able to see through that press and get IU into what they want to do offensively will be the determining factor in tomorrow night's game. Avi was able to grace uh, his presence with Shaka Smart on Thursday night, but tonight or uh, today was kind of our first little look at him for Connor and I. And one thing that I took took away from that press conference is he said, "If you basically what he tells his team, if you give me everything you have on the defensive end of the floor, you have some freedom on on offense." And I thought that was a very interesting thing that I think a lot of coaches, especially you know at these lower level schools, are starting to preach. You know, if you can really bring it on the defensive end, bring high energy because talent necessarily doesn't win out on, on, on that end end of the floor. And VCU is obviously bought into that system, all, all hands on deck, because I believe this year when they shoot over 40%, they're 17-1. and one. Yeah. 40%. I think it's 21-1. and one. Is it even better than that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, four, yeah I mean, it's ridiculous. But, I mean, to get, I mean, the main point is 40% is not that great. I mean, that is, I mean for IU, yeah. that would be a subpar shooting day. And whereas on IU stat uh, on their like team stats or whatever they're seventeen zero when they shoot over fifty, so I think that's where it says VCU prides itself on the defensive end and they buy into Shaka's smart system and that's why they're five and one in their last seven and or six and one in their last seven NCAA tournament games. And a great microcosm of all of this is last night's game where VCU against Wichita State. Looking over the box score, VCU shot something like six of twenty three from beyond the arc and made six free throws. So you say, well, where did all their points come from? They didn't need the points because they held Wichita State to under 39% from the field, uh, like 31% from three-point land, ultimately 59 points. You know, they don't need to score that many points. Right, right now they're averaging 33.5% VCU is uh, from beyond the arc on the air. So, you know, this isn't a team that, you know, really prides itself on shooting. It's not going to give you a hard time there. But if you let them get those easy buckets, you know, that's where they can hurt you. So, Got it. Well, yeah, just real quick, going off that, I mean, this also, we talk about the guards being able to handle the press and how much pressure there is on them to be able to do that. Guards, I use guards have to rebound tomorrow with the way that VCU chucks and they get some of those long rebounds. It's going to be really important for Victor Oladipo, Jordan Holes, not necessarily to want to get out and transition right away and to leave the perimeter, but to be able to stay in, box out their guy and be able to pick up some rebounds. Otherwise, VCU is going to get all the chances they're going to need. We'll give some quick keys to the game for me. I'm going to say it's going to be three-point shooting in terms of how you break that pressure for IU. If they can knock knock down some threes. It'll be interesting to see how much Matt Roth plays because he's not really a ball handler, but he could break you know he can break pressure just by shooting the ball. So I think how well IU shoots it, if they can hit four or five threes in the first half off that press, Shaka Smart might have to, you know, adjust like that. So for me that that's the key. Yeah, Jordan Holes for me is the key. Whatever as he goes, this team goes and if especially he can, without Verdell. Yeah, especially without Verdell. All all pressure is on is on Jordan Holes to come up big in this game. I hate to take the easy way out because we've been talking about the entire time, but assist to turnover ratio. Um, Indiana does really, really well when they're sharing the ball and kind of getting into the flow of things. And uh, if they're turning the ball over and not getting those possessions that they need to win, they're not going to win. I think IU is the third worst team in the Big Ten this year in assist to turnover margin in conference play. That's definitely going to have to be a key tomorrow. So, again, like, like we said last night, the South Bracket starting to open up. Lehigh beat, beat Duke, so it's <laughs> definitely starting to open up. Obviously, the potential matchup with Kentucky still awaits. So for Avi Zalen, Connor O'Gara, I'm Kevin Bowen. Again, 4-10 local time tip tomorrow, 7-10 back home in Indiana. And uh, we'll have another three-man weave tomorrow. That was a little Jim Neighbor shout-out for anybody that knows that. But uh, thanks, guys. Have a good one. Happy hour, cheeseburgers. Same.